In this video, I'm going to Johannesburg's most dangerous neighborhood. Do you think Alex is safe? It's not safe. In search of South Africa's most unique street food. Uh, cold meats, uh, fried meats, french fries, uh, starch and starch and processed meat. I think we should find that. But first, let's back up. South Africa is a complicated country with a dark past. Even though apartheid ended nearly 30 years ago, its echoing effects can still be seen in the underdeveloped, once racially segregated, urban areas known as townships. What is a township? You'll be put here and then you'll work in the mines or the factories and that type of things. Like a settlement. So maybe if you had more money, you'd live in a different area. But it's basically a place you were just put there. It's not like a place you chose to come to. Over time, townships became known for innovating unique street foods. What people lacked in resources, they made up for with creativity and skill. So we have a base of toasted bread, and then I'm not sure, I probably explained it in the voiceover. There's a lot going on here. This morning, we're starting out in the township of Alexandra, one of the poorest urban areas in the entire country. Here, scarcity is a fertilized bed for creativity, proven by the food you'll soon see. This is River Park Cafe, located on the periphery of Alexandra. This is how I usually make my entrance. Okay. <laughs> no, not really. Not really. Joining me, my companion for the day, fried chicken expert and restaurateur, Andrew. Next to him, restaurant owner, Chef Zanel. They both grew up in townships. She grew up here in Alexandra. Is this what you would normally serve one person? Yeah. I thought you were doing this for the show. This is <laughs> ridiculous. It's huge. This is Chef Janelle's signature, stewed sheep tripe and intestines, or mohodu. Her recipe actually starts with more cleaning than cooking. You have to make sure that you wash it, or wash it, wash it, or wash it, so that when you eat it, you just don't feel the sand or the little rocks in the mouth. Next, she boils it for two hours. The mojito has to be soft, very soft. And then the taste, do you want it to taste gamey or not? Because it smells. It, like it has some power to it. That's desirable, right? Yes. The ingredients are cut into bite-sized pieces and tossed back in the pot. The chef adds beef stock and white pepper. After another hour of stewing, it's ready to serve. And then you have this on the side. You call it a dumpling. Growing up, I think my mom would call this like a popover. Flour, yeast, sugar, salt, butter, and sliced carrots come together in a dough. Let it rise into a bubbly mass and load it into muffin trays. Steam for 30 minutes to achieve this fluffy, cloud-like dumpling. I love the texture of it. It's like big, steamy, and soft. Oh my, mm, this is so good. So we take that, we put it into the sauce. Oh yeah, super savory gravy. It's interesting, it does have kind of a wild, sheepy taste to it, but really good. It's got personality. It's not one of the chicks that holds the suitcase in Deal or No Deal, it's Howie Mandel. So we try the meat now. It's definitely tender. Yeah, very nice, soft texture. But once you get into it, you forget about the gamey smell. And I don't mean it as an insult. It's like, it has a gamey smell to it, but then when you eat it, it's like cheese. It might smell strong, but you eat it and it tastes delicious. So how long have you been cooking this recipe here? It's been years, and we keep on improving it. Chef Zanel took over a small eatery from her mother in Deep Alexandra. Four years ago, she moved it here. I find when people say deep here, it has a certain meaning. What do you mean when you say deep? Uh, it's deep because that's where you go into the core of Alexandra, you know, it's the Gomorrah part of Alexandra. Gomorrah, the deep or the belly, the core of the township, where all the social issues erupt amid people densely packed against one another. It's where Zanel grew up. Sometimes we don't have water and also electricity and sometimes I feel like they've neglected us so much. There's too many potholes and also many of the youth here, they're not working. So when it comes to employment, it's very rough. And also that um, gives rises to crime. So there's too many challenges around here. Do you think Alex is safe? It's not safe. It's not safe. Yeah. More than 60% of Alexandra's households earn less than $2,300 a year. Only five clinics cater to almost 180,000 residents. Having a stable life here is like standing in quicksand. But Zanel is proof that anything is possible. In my family, most of them, they didn't finish school, but then I made it a point that I myself, I'm just gonna challenge myself and go even further, you know, by acquiring a diploma in civil engineering. But this is what you love, and this is what you want to pursue. Yeah, I always told God that I want to open my restaurant one day, and I was saving money, saving, saving money until it came to fruition. 
you think there's a lot of people here who feel defeated? Yeah, there's too much. There's a lot of people. There's too much, too many. To better understand the inner workings of Alex, Andrew and I head deeper into the densely packed belly of this township. The population of Alexandra is four times more than its infrastructure was designed for. It's uh, congested, you know, a lot of people from different places occupying the same space, so it's definitely hard. With the area so densely populated, folks here struggle with low water pressure, sewer blockage, and flooding. When I see a place like this, I'm looking around, I see kind of improvised homes, borrowed wood, corrugated steel, kind of a patchwork to make these small spaces where people live in now. But I gotta say, the mood here, much lighter than I expected. As people are shooting here, as people are visiting, oh, it's you can walk through. See, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> this woman lives here. She's literally trying to duck through our shot. We came here, of course, we asked permission, but people are so accommodating, welcoming. This is what they have, and they're open and willing to share it. The word they use of to like people coming together and trying to make a space work. So people are definitely from different environments, from different places, and they just try to make things work. When it comes to the townships, do you think the townships are responsible for creating their own types of unique food and cuisine? Township food is basically a, a modulation of a lot of things in terms of culture, in terms of where you're from, and in terms of survival. A good example of that will be the slide. I think we should find that. I know a couple of places, but I'll, I'll take you to one. Slide. It's a guilty pleasure bordering on vice. An unhealthy heap of delicious deep fried processed food. The recipe here kicks off with bologna and salami on sandwich bread, then a fried egg, another slice of bread, cheese, and a burger patty smothered with barbecue sauce. Cap it with a third slice of bread, but don't stop there. Load the boat with Russian sausage, Vienna sausage, and well-seasoned french fries. You can find this calorie bomb exclusively here in Alexandra. The cost for all this one and a half dollars. So how would you approach eating this? Because there's so much food here, I don't even know how to fit this in my face. So you go into the middle part, and then you just grab it where you can, and you just bite the middle, most of the time the middle. Oh, you're going directly in the middle? I'll go straight in the middle. We have no tissues. You know what? <laughs> Let's go for it. Mm-hmm. Mmm, delicious processed meats. So salty. I just got my sodium for the week. This is something that keeps you away from home for a day, because that's what you want to do. You want to drink and have more. Stop, stop. The Russian sausage is a pork sausage that has been smoked. No relations to Russians. No. <laughs> and this is very similar. It's a Vienna, like a hot dog sausage. So what they've done is, I think they've taken pretty cheap ingredients and they've prepared them the best way possible. Yes. So if you have a cheap kind of sausage like this, you don't want to just boil it in some water. No. It's going to be limp. It would all take the flavor out as well. But if you fry it, you crisp it up, you give it some texture, and then you just have a little burst of flavor each bite. How many calories do you think are right here? You're all weak. <laughs> It strikes me when I come to places like this, some people use the word slum, especially for parts of it. Yeah. Is slum a bad word? The word slum, it does, it is derived from a bad word. But at the same time, it also shows your struggles and the diversity and it's like a story. You right. know, from the slums to the wood, you know, it's just a story to it. Andrew is no stranger to adversity. He was born and bred in Soweto, the biggest township in South Africa. He took himself from entry-level restaurant gigs to starting his own business, dishing out some of the best fried chicken in town. Now, he lives in the city, but he still visits Soweto to experience the unique township food he grew up on. Like this stuff, a meaty favorite we're gonna try soon. So Soweto, I'm told it's a huge township. Yes, it is. Originally, people came from different areas from the country and were settled here. Soweto was one of many hundreds of townships created under the infamous Group Areas Act, implemented by the apartheid government. The act removed thousands of non-whites from most developed areas and assigned them to separate townships depending on their race, black, colored, or Indian. Today, Soweto is home to over 1.2 million people, 98% of those being black Africans. So where are we right now? Right now we're in the DK, Deep Loof, in the cultural markets. There's a very popular market in Soweto. In this corner of Soweto, you'll find rows of storage sheds that have transformed into an improvised market. Folks here sell live chickens, beer by the carton, and food of all kinds. While our meat is getting ready to heat up, Andrew has invited me to one stall for an appetizer. 
I'm told these are called rocks. I mean, you could build a house with this. But you eat it. But you could also <laughs> eat it. This is calabash chalk, a type of edible clay found mainly in West African countries. So they break it into smaller pieces, take it, and they just put it in their mouth. OK, I'm going to take a smaller piece. Okay, I don't want to be rude. Am I rude if I put the dirt back on the ground? No, I'll spit a little dirt. out. That's where it comes from. So oh, you okay. put it on the floor. <laughs> it actually has a nice texture. When you chew it, it's like uh But you're not supposed to chew it, you're supposed to suck it. Oh, terrible texture for yeah. chewing. So because it's clay, what happens is it's gonna melt in your mouth. It's like cake to my teeth right now. It has kind of a fun, silty texture. I don't hate it. I've had something similar in other countries, but it's much more sandy. And this is much less sandy, it's very fine. It just creates like a strange play-doh texture stuck to the side of my teeth that slowly dissipates and gets swallowed over time. In contrast to Haitian mud cookies which are believed to compensate for a lack of nutrients, the calabash chalk is consumed by African women as a cure for pregnancy nausea. Cool, so this is nice. We actually came here for meat. I was gonna say food, this is now food. <laughs> but we came here for meat. Just on the opposite side of the storage sheds, a clever twisted frame of corrugated steel and foul materials formed into a carnivore's paradise. They have the menu on the wall. Some of these words I don't know. Itumbu. It's like uh, shitted. Okay. Papa. Yes. Papa is pap. says maize. And salad. Today, we're going straight protein with beef liver and beef heart. Three, two, one. Or, or, or. The organs are sliced and tossed on the grill. Then comes a generous shower of seasonings. The hot and steamy organs are further chopped into smaller pieces and smothered with more spice, salt, and peri-peri sauce. On the side, salsa and acha. I think we're gonna eat first and then we're gonna have a drink after that. Okay, let's do it. So I think start with the hot. Oh, that's good. It's still beefy. You know, even though you eat to the cow's heart, it's still beefy. There's no lack of flavor here. They've seasoned the heck out of everything here. Super salty. I'm gonna try to break it up with some of this. We got the, basically just a salsa, right? Yeah, just um, onion, tomato, and chili. Mm, oh, that's right. It's fresh, almost cleans up so you can go again. Or beer, a creamy brown sorghum beer. It's a communal drink. You don't use a cup, so we're gonna have it through this plastic container over here. Very creamy, mm. fermented. It reminds me a little bit of Korean makgeolli, but more of a sorghum -y flavor. Yeah. Every culture has something similar to this. This is our version of that. Well, I notice here, it's like kind of off cuts. Heart, liver, head. Is this food cheaper than like a steak? Yes, it is cheaper. So do you think that might be one reason that it's here? It could be one of the reasons, but the main reason is to show that what type of man they are. Usually, man-man eats cow hearts and liver. How important is that in a neighborhood like this to reinforce your identity? It's important to show people who you are and how they perceive you. Images everything. It's just the way they class themselves. I mean, now you live in the city, yes. but when you lived in Soweto, did it matter more? Yeah, it did. You know, if you look cool, you get all the girls. If I gotta try this. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, I'm married. Now I'm ready for the liver, and this is loaded with seasoning. Mm. Oh, yeah. It's not gamey, it's clean. Beef liver, easy to make it very dry and just borderline uneatable, chalky. This is really soft, almost like a little pate. These guys grow tons of the supper meat. They know exactly how to cook it. I'm curious, you know, yesterday I ate a lot of different street food throughout Johannesburg, and I can see that people here really like and appreciate meat. But in a place like this, in Soweto, or in this part of Soweto, what kind of meat is most available? Chicken. Chicken is very popular. It's the daily staple around a lot of our communities. Then processed meats are big, as you're gonna see. Compared to Alexandra, Soweto is a wide-ranging township. Here you'll find densely populated, improvised slums, rows of cookie-cutter homes, and modern suburbs. The food is equally wide-ranging. From nose-to-tail street-side dining, to vibrant bistros like this. Here, they're selling a Soweto signature, a prize many travelers hunt for. They called it Kota. So we have a base of toasted bread, and then I'm not sure, I probably explained it in the voiceover. The Kota starts with a whole freaking loaf of bread cut into quarters, buttered up, and toasted. Each toasted section is carved up to form a vessel. Now we must attend to the fillings. Most quarters have the basics, what would be the chips, processed meat like bologna and Russian. But we've got a premium quota today. Beef patties are grilled, and onion rings are battered and made crispy. The quarter is the brainchild of the bunny chow. So the bunny chow originates from Indian people who live in Durban, and they used to have a curry inside. When people moved to Johannesburg, we adopted that style. But then we started putting our own spin on it. 
time for the bill. The hollowed bread is filled with french fries and topped with coleslaw. On top of that, rice is a tower of triple beef patties with layers of melted cheese. Cap it off with onion rings and garnish with pickle. All right, show me how to eat this. Do you just go from top to bottom? Because it's so big, I'm gonna take away the two burger patties. Patties, put them on the side just temporarily. Just put the top on, smash it a bit, and try to get into it. Oh, I like that. Handleability, 10 yeah. out of 10. Mm, we're having a real cultural moment right now. Mm, that was fantastic. Okay, we gotta hear your review. I can taste the beef. This is definitely different because they're using like 100% pure beef on there. I like the fries. They're not thin, they're nice and thick and wide. And then the onion rings, crispy, thick, crunchy. I love the garlic bread though. Essentially like a garlic toast garlic as toast buns. Stuff. So flavorful. I'm gonna try just the patty here. Oh, that's just a patty. Super juicy. The fat ratio, it's a nice ratio. Oh my God. You know how much this one costs? $4.80. This is ridiculous. For $4.80, it looks like a hurricane came through. Going from Alex to here, it feels completely different. How would you describe the difference? Alex still has new settlers. People are coming from outside Johannesburg and still moving into Alex. So it is more where people are generations in. Grandfather, my father, now me. This is a good uh, community. It's uh, more suburbish. Then we have places like Orlando West, Sofeni, Deep Kloof, Velakazi Street, where Nelson Mandela and Desmond Tutu used to live. So it's, it's a diverse area. When you look at the township, whether it's Alex or Soweto, what do you think are the biggest struggles people are facing there? There's a lot of issues, but electricity, uh, good roads, but opportunities are big ones. For you, in your story, do you think opportunities were given to you or did you have to just make your own opportunities? You know, uh, the harder you work, the luck you become. I washed dishes from the beginning, I moved around, I had to sleep on the road sometimes. It's all the sacrifices brought me to where I was. But you see so many people here who seem kind of deflated, like they've just been defeated. Mm -hmm. So what do you say to those people? I know you can't solve all these problems, yeah. but you know, when you come across people who just seem kind of defeated, they're like, ah, it's a Tuesday, it's noon, I'm just gonna drink. That's a sad story because you can't convince them there'll be a better day because they have to change before you can change them. The government can tr only do so much, a community can only do so much, but it's always up to the individual. Beautiful. Andrew, thank you. Thank you so much. Can I have a sloppy handshake? <laughs> <laughs>Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A peace. Deal or no deal? Who's the guy who hosts that show? Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey's a good one. It's not Steve Harvey, though. That's right. We'll fix this joke in post. The percentage of alcohol would be like that of beer, right? Like 5%? I think it could be more than 5%. The longer it stands, the stronger it becomes. So does it depend on the batch? A lot of things about batches these days. <laughs> Actually, not. all we got is protein. Yeah, basically, it's like a bodybuilder's diet. Basically, what the rock eats. Not even a cheat meal. Like, it's normal food. I don't know what it is, but women used to love that. You ever try it? I'm willing to try it today. I, I promise it won't boost your estrogen. <laughs> I hope not. It's a good meal to share. Obviously. Yeah, you know me. On the weekends, Get two of my buddies. Hey guys, want to share a sandwich together? Sure. Boom! Guys, that is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I want to say a huge thank you to Andrew. Thank you so much, Sunny, for having me. Thank you. You were excellent to hang out with and especially to eat with. Welcome to my hood again and guys, so wait to the place. Find Andrew right here on Instagram. This is his handle. Go there, give him a follow and follow his fun food adventures here in South Africa. Guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A peace. <laughs> you ever do the peace part? Okay. <laughs> and peace. Peace. All right, cool. Right. I think we can get a taller burger.